Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Me again, in Zangrilla, and I'm starting up a new what if. What if Deku was a hive from the Destiny universe? So, to really kick this off, Deku will be a Thrall to begin with. I know the Thralls are very dumb in that. But I see them as actually using good tactics when they're not with Knights and Acolytes. They use very good tactic tactics of waiting around corners to ambush people. Some of them are going to be very quiet without making a sound. But I digress. So, Earth has had its golden age. The darkness has destroyed mostly everything. And the hive sort of slowly turn up. But before the hive have did turn up, the <coughs> So I've got a bit of a cough. The Hive Overlords, Zavavoom and Oryx, and one, I think the other one, I can't rightly remember her name. I'm going to have to look in the lore again for that one. Should have remembered it, I looked at it an hour ago. And, yeah. Oryx has a, obviously has his son, Crota. And this is actually where the story begins with Oryx getting mad at Crota for letting the heart letting the Vex in to their little home world or something like that. Chucking Crota into a portal saying, do not, you, not A, come back victorious, or you don't. And, yeah, Crota does what he does, raising up altars to his father, then finding Earth. <coughs> Sorry about that. With a lot of the hive on the moon. Obviously that's where he is. And well after the battle on the moon, this is when Deku comes around. After like several hundred years. Or well, something odd. So yeah, Deku is created, I think from a brood mother anyway, so hey, and he is actually on Earth, and he does anything any normal, direct, any no normal troll would do. Following knights, following the acolytes and knights with other thralls. This is on and on one of the little patrols, I guess you can say. They run into the fallen. And I'm going to say this is actually. Devils, devils. A small firefight breaks out. Deku with the rest of the thralls continue running into the fallen, hacking and well, clawing and biting and all that. 
the fallen start to get slow well start to get overwhelmed with one of them shouting and licks me saying pull back pull back they're they're out maneuvering us pull back as a knight that was there jumps over to him after closing the distance and clobbers him basically killing him instantly as the thralls continue mopping up the vandals and the dregs and also the shanks a few of the thralls and a couple of the acolytes were have been were, were killed Deku sort of being one of the survivors finds a drag that is still alive and trying to run for it make a run for it sorry and he yeah, rugby tackles him somehow and mauls him to death now, this continues for another couple of weeks well not weeks another couple of years Deku has killed enough to become a acolyte and when he became an acolyte he actually starts speaking properly he shows a lot more cunning than the other hive so but still follows orders so he goes out one day with a group and oh dear sorry about that and finds a human patrol a patrol of one of the two largest remaining cities one being in Russia the other being in America and these men and women haven't spotted them so the knight says prepare for a full out charge Deku says let me take some of the men into the buildings and we can rain fire down from up high the knight says good idea they'll give us an element of surprise and also makes our numbers to be a lot much larger than what they think him telling Deku to get on it and lead it himself while he leads the charge Deku and a few of them going to the buildings surrounding the city patrols or city patrol the knight roaring as loud as he could to get them all distracted on him so they don't notice the hive getting into buildings and actually starts running at them he makes such a ruckus that it actually attracts the heart the um not the hive uh, actually attracts the fallen and the fallen actually don't start attacking I'm going to actually wait to see what will happen. So I'm going to say these fallen are actually led by Bokugo, who's not his egotistic maniac self. This time. And him, twice, him, there's going to be him twice, 
Derby. Yeah, just him twice in Derby with a few dregs and a captain. Just stand there in the shadows watching as this little firefight plays out. Them saying, oh, it's just the hive. <laughs> this should be entertaining to watch. For them to be thoroughly surprised when the firefight starts breaking out and the hive are actually shooting from inside buildings. Taking the earth defense, well, city defenses, city patrols, sorry, I said city patrols, city patrol, uh, my brain, think. So then taking out the patrol, one of them actually does escape, well, escape mostly. And this is a woman. She runs all the way to her commanding officers in a outpost, huffing and puffing, saying there there were four, four hive using the buildings for cover, and there was a knight with several thrall. We only can tell that there were most probably 10 to 12 acolytes and 5 to 10 thralls and one knight. I continue to huff and puff as a ghost appears saying, well then, I guess the guardian should go and take a look. And this guardian is actually a warlock, and it's Suyu. And she sort of says, well, they're using cover now, and actually using tactics. This can't be good. Her going to investigate personally. Only to find nothing but dead bodies and all everything else is just an absolute mess. There's obviously outlines of where Hive have been killed. She just says this is weird. I now see why they're so concerned. The hive don't use buildings to start raining fire down from upon. So either one of them is very intelligent and actually knows this the lay of the land and actually has watched the fallen fight. Or this is just a leader who is working working his way up the ranks of the, of the hive. I almost said fallen there. <laughs> Just watched Orcs like what ifs. What if Deku was a fallen? By the way, go and watch that. You'll love it, because I certainly do. Anyway. She just takes mental notes, tells the... asks her ghost to take pictures and then they will head off to the city to tell Savala and the Council of Cities, Council of the City, of the two cities, sorry, I said there were two, to see if this is a major threat. Uh, going off but not before taking the dog tags of the men and women that were killed. And, yeah. 
Deku and the knight with the remaining soldiers, I guess you can say, return to their little nest and report to the one in charge, which I'm going to say is a wizard. Now, this wizard is not as strong as others, but strong enough to keep the knights and everything else under wraps and in, and not making them break into absolute chaos. He just simply hovers over and says, what did you find out there? Did you find any new locations for us to take for Oryx for when he returns? Because I'm going to say Oryx is returning, but obviously if you play the Destiny game, you actually kill Oryx. I was never good at that part. Anyway. The knight saying we found a city patrol that they were easy to take care of. He points to Deku saying the acolyte actually came up with a good idea and it paid off tremendously well. We lost a few thralls and that was it. The wizard saying just glaring at him saying a thrall no not a thrall an acolyte an acolyte got, had a bright idea the bright ideas are meant for the knights and us wizards only Dicky sort of just kneeling on the floor and doing the whole praying thing Making his letting his weapon like sort of float there for a bit as he prays to Oryx and Crota because I will say they actually do know about Oryx as well, so they just pray to them both. And hmm. I'm going to time skip and say five years later. Deku was again on another search and was on a search and destroy mission with the knight. Well, with the knight they usually serves with, but this time they were meeting up with a higher high class knight who was named. The Indomitable, well, the Invincible, yeah, the Invincible, due to how many things and, well, things he has destroyed and killed. And a few of his lackeys. Now, he, before they actually get there, the knight sort of gets very nervous because of the reputation the immortal has of not taking any shit from anybody. Pardon my language. You step out a line, he will crush you like an egg. And yeah, they get there. This is like somewhere in, in in like the European area, not anywhere near the Russia Russians or Russian border borders or anything like that. They turn up on their little drop ships or their hive seers or whatever. I actually, never know, I actually don't know what they're actually called. But hey, I digress. They turn up. 
they all get off and walk towards the other hive forces nah. and I'm going to say they're actually dealing with a fall a very like it should be a very small fallen outpost but it turns out that the fallen had massively reinforced it to make it into a base of operations. The defences were still new and haven't really been properly set up, so the fault so the hive decided that they were gonna take this opportunity well, not let this opportunity go to waste to take a base away from the hive. Not the hive. Uh the fallen. Why do I keep on saying the hive, even though I'm talking about them? Damn it. And yeah. They actually go in. Well, actually no, Deku and the rest of his forces land, along with the knight. They all see a massive massive horde of hive just at the ready with the immortal standing at the front they land well Deku and that all get off and stand in the middle of all of the hive or all of their hive brothers and sisters turns out there are well there are actually girls in there and yeah they all stand there for a few hours sun starts going down the immortal then finally decides to say listen up we do this for Oryx, we do this for Crota, we don't take any survivors, we kill and we kill them all, and then we take this base for the Hive, for Oryx, and for our King Crota, no, for our King or Oryx. And for Crota, kill everything as he lifts up his sword, and they all sort of like do their little howls and that. The fallen do notice that there's a lot of hive howling for no reason. One of the sentries actually does look out of his little hidey hole. To see a massive horde of hive rushing towards them, he sends up a flare and then set ra raises the alarm, saying, "We've got a massive horde of hive attacking the base." But by the time he actually got the alarm up, the hive were already overwhelming his position Yakalites were already starting to shoot and the few fallen that were already on like patrolling the area were snuffed their light lives were immediately snuffed out because they saw the hive and they were already trying killing a few of them, but unfortunately, when it came to one of the knights and three of the acolytes, they stood no chance. And then, as Deku and the rest of them charged in, Deku actually took a lot of the acolytes, got up to higher places to start firing at the fallen 
that were taking cover in a high up place, basically being snipers. Deku sort of counteracting the snipers by being on a similar high ground, just opposite them, and starting to shoot shoot as well. So a little firefight, well, not a little, a big firefight takes place. The Fallen are being severely overrun. A lot of them have already started to retreat, but the Immortal, actually being smart, actually took a lot large force around the backside of the Fallen base and just started hammering or hacking them all down. A lot of them could not well, could not stand up to his ferocity, along with all the others, full other hive that he brought with him. A few captains get all the remaining vandals, dregs, and skiffs. That they have there, along with quite a few servitors and vandals, get into like a sort of defendable position. And behind them, there's like a kel and that. This is like a house that has been trying to rebuild. I'm just going to say it's the. Sorry, Orkslayer Wives. This is the House of Stags. Just, just because I couldn't really think of anything. Sorry, Orkslayer, I know they were part of yours. I just couldn't really think of anything. Sorry, mate. As I said, go and watch Orkslayer Wives. What if Deku was a fallen? And you'll understand why I sort of said sorry about that. Anyway, the Kel stands up and grabs his Scorch Cannon. The Fallen continue firing. They're taking the Hive down in droves. Even the Immortal is injured. And because the Immortal's actually smart, and in the picture I'm going to say, I know it's just a knight, but pretend, but think of him as being the Immortal. So yeah, he is big. Even though, even though he's on equal footing with hell of being tall he eventually bites the dust and is actually killed by the kel but with all the remaining high ranking hive in the area the attack still continues but is severely weakened. Deku actually steps up to the plate rather quickly and actually starts shooting at the Amor at the um, Stag's Kel. Eventually he gets right up close and personal with the Kel of Stags and somehow manages to kill him. The Fallen seeing this break pretty quick, like as soon as they saw that their Kel was killed, they they try and run, but they do not get anywhere. Because as soon as they stopped firing, the Thrall overran their position and none of them survived.
but all the non-combatants, like the scavengers and all that, they all fled. They all somehow managed to find a way to get out and away from the hive. So the hive have now got one very big base. And Deku, due to him killing so much and actually being a lot smarter, actually gets the attention of Omligol, the voice of Crota, no, the will of Crota. Now, she actually makes a very big appearance. Now, all the Hive know Omnigol, know all the other Chosen of Crota. So, seeing Omnigol, the will of Crota, well, I think she's the will of Crota. I think. I may be wrong. It's been some time since I've played Destiny, I will admit. It's been some time. She sees Deku and points to him, saying, Our master has seen your efforts over the last few years. Well, last, well, over the, quite, for quite some time, quite a few years, in fact. And he believes you worthy of being a knight. I'm not sure how the how the old and knight things work. Okay, give me a break. And you shall be a knight of good ranking. You shall also be a chosen of Crota. Now. All the Hive hearing Deku will be a chosen of Crota, a lot of them are like, like, not disagreeing, saying he shouldn't be a chosen, but they dare not like speak up in front of Omnigo because she is the voice will of Crota, and his will is supreme. So Deku becomes a knight. I'm going to say he has to pass a few tests. Because I just can't give him a um, promotion up to knighthood that quickly. So a few more years pass of him doing test after test after test. Until one a very important test comes up. Leading others in combat while being on the front line yourself. You know, Deku does have a sword, but he also says, I'll take one of those boomer rifles. I don't really know what they're called. He said, I'll take one of them and I'll prove myself to Crota. And this time he leads an assault on a last city, last cities, um, outpost. And this is actually where he actually meets Suyu. This was actually where Suyu was operating from, working with the others. Or other less immortal soldiers. I'm going to say Deku has the same ability as Crota, as Crota's sword does, where he drains the light out of, it, out of people. It's not as powerful as Crota's sword, but it still has the same amount of power, but just to a lesser extent. Anyway, I'm going to have to stop here. Leave a like, comment and subscribe. Bye!